Johannesburg and the rebel English cricketers at play. Graham Gooch scores a century, the sunny side of South Africa. But TVI has been looking at more than cricket. At the other side of life, investigating the death of a trade unionist, the first white to die in detention under South African security laws. The reporter, Peter Gill. St Mary's Anglican Cathedral in Johannesburg and Neil Agate's funeral in February turns into a major anti-government protest. 2,000 mourners in the cathedral, thousands more outside, united in challenging the official view that Neil Agate could have been involved in terrorism. United too in challenging the official version of his death. Neil Agat, a doctor, was arrested with his girlfriend, another doctor, Liz Floyd, on November the 27th last year. Held for 70 days in solitary confinement, he was found hanged in his cell on February the 5th, aged 28. Section 6 of the Terrorism Act allows for detention without trial, indefinitely. The detention laws are a frequent target for the critics, like Johannesburg's Market Theatre, now making a drama out of what those laws mean. Conditions of detention shall be final. Four, subject to the revisions of subsection four, the determination by the commissioner of the conditions subject to which a detainee is to be detained shall not be open to review or appeal, and no court of law shall be competent to order the release of a detainee. The play is called Four Paces by Two, taking its title from the size of the cells where detainees live and where Dr. Agat died in solitary confinement. The medical effects of solitary confinement are also part of the play's action, relayed as an academic lecture. There is no need to torture someone in solitary confinement. The mere fact of being in solitary confinement is a severe mental torture, one that can reduce a once stable, strong person into a psychotic state. Neil Agat's parents wanted a private cremation. They agreed, under pressure, to a public display of martyrdom. He was not a terrorist! He was a hero! A white South African family caught up in South African history. His father, Aubrey, a no-nonsense colonial farmer from Kenya, with no time for the trade unions, and not too much time, he admits, for the blacks. TVI travelled unofficially to South Africa to inquire into Neil Agat's life and death. The official version is that he committed suicide. Aubrey Agat, for one, doesn't believe it. I think it's extremely doubtful that he would have committed suicide. My own opinion is that he was murdered and that he didn't commit suicide. He, if he did commit suicide, I can only say it must have been induced suicide. Neil Agat was brought up on the family farm in Kenya. His father's fight against the Mau Mau made them leave. When Neil was 10, the family moved to South Africa. A conventional education could have made Neil a conventional South African. His days as a medical student made Neil Agat different. Working in the black homelands prompted a broader view of South Africa. Dr. Agat moved into trade union work. The Snowflake flour mill outside Johannesburg. Management formally recognized his union, the African Food and Canning Workers, just a few weeks after his detention. As the union's Transvaal organizer, Agat had spent many hours here negotiating those bargaining rights. As a white radical, he was by no means alone in working for the new generation of militant black trade unions. 
Other whites occupy key posts in the movement. Other whites were also detained with Neil Agate in a wave of arrests last year. How did his mother see his trade union work? He was a great humanitarian and he, uh, I mean, as far as the workers go, he lived in a humble way, just like the people he was trying to help, you know. He could have earned a lot of money as a doctor, but he, he made most of his time he spent doing his trade union work, you know. And therefore, he only did it to improve their lot. And he, what he was interested in, I know, because he's told me, was grassroots medicine, so to improve their living conditions, so that they didn't get all these diseases and things like that. Once a week, Dr. Agger did the violent Friday night shift on the casualty ward at Baraguanath Hospital, which serves the African township of Soweto, outside Johannesburg. The money he earned on that one hospital shift kept him for the week. His full-time union work was unpaid. Neil Agate and his girlfriend of seven years, Liz Floyd, were arrested together in the early hours of November the 27th. Along with other detainees, they were held at Johannesburg Police Headquarters in John Vorster Square. South African ministers say they were not acting against the trade unions, but against subversives. The detentions were aimed at gaining the evidence to mount a major political trial. Interrogation methods at John Vorster Square have been described to opposition MP Helen Suzman. I received a letter which had uh, come out of the jail, um, written by another detainee who stated that he had seen uh, Neil Agate being badly treated. And when this came into my hands, I felt it was very important that Parliament should know about this and uh, that, generally speaking, the matter should be made public. So I read the letter in Parliament. Could you read it to us? Yes, I could. The letter says, I saw Neil being interrogated by approximately six guys. Then some left and three remained. He was standing all the time. Later he was still standing, except he was naked. He was made to do push-ups, a substantial number. He was hit either with a belt or rolled up newspaper while doing them. Then he had to get up and run on the spot, arms outstretched in front of him. Every so often he was made to lift his legs up high while running and all this was interspersed with more push-ups. All the while he was being interrogated, the hitting with the newspaper went on all the time, especially if his arms sagged. He was sweating profusely, and when once he nearly fell over a chair with exhaustion, he was further harassed. When he got dressed after 12 o'clock, he was pushed around even then. I put it to Mrs. Susman that she had been criticized for the anonymity of these allegations. Well, I was really criticised because I managed to get this letter read into the record, although there was a subjudice rule against it, and that was what I was criticised for. Did she regret having done so? Not at all. I, I, first of all, I was, uh, I, I was amazed that there had been such a rule, but secondly, it seemed to me it was very important that this be made public, and I myself have no doubt in my own mind, although I have no proof thereof, that the letter is genuine. According to our evidence, Neil Agate was the 54th security detainee to die in South African police custody. In 40 of those cases, the authorities specified a cause of death. Eight died in accidents, 10 died of natural causes, 18 were said to have committed suicide by hanging. An inquest into Neil Agate's death was formally opened in Johannesburg last month and adjourned until after Easter. The family's lawyers asked to inspect the cell and interview other detainees. Neither has been allowed. Does the Agate family, his parents and his sister Jill, expect to find out what did happen? We are doing all we can to get to the truth of this, but it's rather like bumping one's head against a stone wall because we, we're fighting the whole of government as far as I can see, and these people are sticking together and they'll lie together and they'll do anything else together. They are not going to be defeated by us if they can possibly help it. Do you accept the official version that Neil committed suicide? You know, it's very difficult, never having been in solitary confinement and being interrogated under circumstances myself, to establish that. But I still cannot believe that he... I cannot accept it. I cannot and won't. What if the inquest in uh, Johannesburg actually comes out with the verdict that indeed he did 
commit suicide. Will that actually shake your uh, view of things now? Possibly if we find out exactly what happened the night that he died. There, was obvious, there is obviously something happened that night. And when we learn the truth, perhaps I will know, I, I will accept it. If I know exactly minute from minute what happened the night he died. Do you think you'll get that uh, close no. to the truth? No, I don't. When Neil Agate died, his girlfriend, Liz, was transferred to hospital and a psychiatric ward where Jill visited her. She is now readjusting to normal life gradually. She, however, is still having great difficulty in reading, for example. Really? Um, this was a girl who, two weeks before she was detained, wrote an exam, a medical exam, for which she'd only studied for, for two weeks and got a first-class pass. She's obviously very bright. Um, she now has difficulty in reading an ordinary book. She hasn't the concentration. And this is one of the effects of solitary confinement. Um, Have you been able to talk to her about... Uh, not freely. She's guarded 24 hours a day by the police. And well, I'm actually in a hospital? In or... her room with her, sitting next to her. We can't discuss anything uh, pertaining to her, uh, to Neil, or to Neil's detention, or nor her detention. In a move as sudden as her detention, Liz Floyd was last weekend released by the security police. She agreed to an interview with TVI, but was advised by lawyers only to discuss personal matters. First then, what did she recall of the night of her detention? Um, we were detained early in the morning together, and we were then um, taken to various places where they were searching, and we were able to spend some time together so that we weren't actually immediately separated. And, well, in retrospect, that is very important to me. I, I don't think I can say much more about it. Had she been able to see Neil again? Um, the only time that I saw him after that day was when I was allowed to go and see his body after he had died. Um, as detainees, you are not allowed to see each other. Um, but in fact, friends of mine told me that at Christmas we were allowed to send a few postcards to family and friends, in fact, Christmas cards. And Neil tried to send one to me. He addressed it to Liz Floyd, care of John Forster Square. And my friend told me a very irritated policeman threw it in the dustbin. But one doesn't have contact. What did she know about the conditions under which Neil had been held? Um, I'm not able to answer that question. Was Neil, in her view, the sort of person who would commit suicide? You know, n anybody who know, knew Neil um, couldn't, can't really believe that. But through my own experiences, I think that any detainee is at risk and that it could happen to anybody. Um, I can remember saying to my friend Liz the day that they came to tell me that Neil had died is I never believed that Neil, I never considered that Neil would die, but I'm not surprised that a detainee has died. The work of Neil Agate's union goes on. <laughs> The main concern today at this flour mill outside Cape Town is that three workers have been dismissed at the end of their nine-month contracts. Under apartheid laws, it will mean a return to the black homelands and indefinite unemployment. By championing the cause of black workers, often in defiance of apartheid laws, the militant unions, though still small in numbers, have been growing steadily in recent years. Uh, so far as we know, they still want the union, but now they are scared. The white general secretary of the African Food and Canning Workers Union so is Jan Teron. He himself has been detained, even charged and acquitted for riotous assembly. How does he think Neil Agat died? I, I, I don't believe he, he killed himself. Uh, we. Obviously, we're never going to know the, f the full story of what happens in, in, in prison. But uh, both from what I know of him as a person and, uh, and from what I know of uh, 
how people are treated in detention. I just can't uh, reconcile uh, the, the account that the authorities wish us to believe, that he put a, a noose around his neck and hanged himself with, 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 with what I know myself. But was it likely that the police would have killed Neil Agat? Surely his death was an embarrassment to them. At a certain level, uh, perhaps it's the very last thing they would like to have happen. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, we, we do have definite indications that, that, that they were trying to squeeze a, a, a case out of, out of people. That they detained people, they made an announcement in Parliament that they were going to be bringing people to trial early in the new year that there was a wave of interrogation, uh, that dockets were sent to the uh, Attorney General, uh, who is the person that decides whether a prosecution is possible or not, that those dockets were returned from the Attorney General, uh, and that thereafter there was a massive clampdown on detainees, uh, no visits were allowed, uh, no food parcels were, were, were admitted. Uh, there are widespread allegations of torture, including the use of electric shocks, beatings, uh, th this kind of thing, making people stand up uh, without sleep, depriving people of sleep is a, is a, is a, is a, is a, is a favorite thing. Uh, some of these allegations are not public. Uh, some of them have been made public. Some will yet be made public. Uh, the, the, in the, in, 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 where do you draw the line between uh, torture and uh, murder. Uh, you know, if, reg if a regime is resorting to those methods against people who are engaged in trade union work, which is an open, above-board kind of activity, it's not, uh, it's by its nature, it can't be done uh, subversively with, uh, with concealment. Uh, if, they, if they're engaged in that kind of activity, then uh, what guarantee have we that, that, the, that they, they uh, can prevent the excesses which lead to, 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 to people dying and people being killed. It's not only trade unionists who are worried about security police activities in the industrial field. The Premier Group is one of South Africa's ten largest companies. The Ministry of Labour urged them to recognise Neil Agate's union. Then the security police arrested him. The company supported a work stoppage to mourn his death. The Premier Group chairman is Tony Bloom. Well, I think both his death and the detention of the trade union uh, leaders is going to leave us with a legacy of bitterness. I'm personally disturbed, as I said, about the concept of detention without trial, both in human terms, uh, which are obvious, but also if one simply looks at it in hard practical business terms, if the government is going to lock these people up for six months or 16 months or for whatever period they happen to be locked up for, and then release them without ever having tried them, we as management then have to sit down and negotiate with them and there will be a legacy of bitterness which has been created and I think life will be very difficult indeed for us in those circumstances. What do you feel the government is up to? I mean, they're detaining trade unionists on the one hand and on the other we're supposed to be living in an era where trade unions are to be recognised by companies. Uh, we were very happy to accept the responsibility to run with that. And I think, uh, if I can express a personal opinion, uh, we were very disappointed to see that uh, so many of the trade unionists were then detained without trial. And the position, to my mind, is very simply that if they have been involved in subversive activities outside of the trade union uh, movement, then the proper place for that to be determined is in the courts. There's been no trial as yet at all, has there? There has not been any trial at this moment in time, no. Nowhere has the crackdown been more severe than in East London. Almost the entire leadership of the politically active South African Allied Workers Union has been detained. The General Secretary, Sam Kikini, four months without trial. The East London chairman, Eric Umtonga, held for three months. The vice president, Caesar Njikalana, detained in December for the fifth time. And the president, Tozamili Kukweta, just released from a psychiatric ward and his sixth detention. His brother says he's crippled. But employers do not share the security authorities' view of the union. The Allied workers have been recognised by the battery makers Chloride. Their personnel director is Theo Heffer. Well, certainly there's been no question at all of irresponsible action or of subversion or uh, terrorism at all. Uh, there's been nothing like that. So what was Mr. Heffer's reaction to the treatment of the union president, Tozamili Gueta? Well, Tozamili Gueta is the kind of person that you can't 
deal with in any form of ongoing relationship without building up a very considerable respect and even liking for the man. And we see it as being most regrettable, particularly in his case where he has been detained something like five, maybe six times without uh, any conviction against him. Uh, we see that as being very regrettable and very difficult to explain. The detainees are gaining more vociferous support from friends and colleagues, with some of the white parents bemused by the form the protest takes. This was the start of an all-night vigil in Johannesburg, marking a week of action in aid of the detainees. There are at present around 200 in detention. Trade unionists have been singled out in recent police raids. Along with Neil Agat, they arrested Emma Mascianini, General Secretary of the Commercial and Catering Union. Her husband, Tom. Well, well, during my visit, when I went to Pretoria, I found Emma quite well. She looked well indeed. She looked very well. And uh, I'm sorry, she was not yet interrogated. She looked well indeed. But my second visit, when I visited in, in, at John Foster Square... That's police headquarters here in Johannesburg. Yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right. When I got there, she did look well indeed. Well, I, I, I could not ascertain whether she's been uh, pressurised or not. But I know for certain that she's been pressurised because I myself, as Tom, I was warned by four policemen from time to time. Even the, the chief of security, uh, Captain Van Rinsberg, came and warned me that I dare not ask her what's happening inside, what are they doing. Inside. That to me, it shows that exactly they are torturing them. The protest may have had some effect. Along with Liz Floyd, seven detainees, all white, were released last weekend. Only three have so far been charged. The protests go on. Like the play Four Paces by Two, which opened and has stayed opened at the Market Theatre. It wasn't a ghost. It wasn't about ghosts. It wasn't. Wait a minute. Let me separate this. Daddy was here. Daddy was here yesterday, wasn't he? He came to say something. He looked so funny. Wait. What was it? Yes. I remember, he said someone was hanged in a cell, but then they stopped him. Who? He looked so upset. Someone in this place has died. Died. What are they doing to us? What is going to happen? When Neil died, it was all, everybody's worst fears had come true, had become real. And in a way that affected me because I had to understand that fully. Um, and I was still in detention. And I was also in an environment which Neil was not part of. And it's only now when I'm released that I actually go back to a life which I shared with Neil before and can really understand on a day-to-day -day level that he's no, he's no longer here. Every one of us has got to die at some stage in our lives. Whether you die early, whether you die late, is beside the point. Fate decides that. But that a young fellow like that, with quite a lot of brains, I think, he qualified at 22 years of age, should be judged by a couple of juniors of the security branch and dealt with as they felt fit, I think is absolutely disgraceful and shocking. There's no words to describe it. And this, of course, goes to the heart of the matter here, doesn't it? The whole issue of uh, detention without trial. Absolutely. And they could have continued, uh, if Neil had not died, they could have continued to hold him, I think, indefinitely, couldn't they? As far as I can understand, there's nothing to... They could take me, and because they disliked the look of my face, 
They could keep me there for the rest of all time. Or you or anybody else, anybody in this country. The truth of how Neil Agate died is locked up in John Vorster Square. It may yet, perhaps, be unlocked at the inquest. The South African government declined this week to comment on any of the matters raised in this film. They said the case was sub -judice. Besides, we had entered the country illegally, without their agreement, to report on the death of Dr. Neil Agate.